This story starts where book one ended. Our hero, Michael Talbot, after escaping the Progerian alien vessel with their Supreme Commander, is now given the opportunity to hide in obscurity with the rest of the human race, or rise to the occasion, and once again find himself immersed in a battle that he wants nothing to do with. Mike goes home, and while reconnecting with his family that believed him dead, he decides to join whatever resistance force can be mustered to repel the oncoming invasion. As the world of man gets thrust into the abyss of extinction, two women in love with the same man make a desperate bid to travel cross-country to reunite with him. Mike will suffer the ultimate betrayal. Betrayal? Mike will suffer the ultimate betrayal from those he loved the most. Will mankind fall and be ground to dust like so many other civilizations? Or will the tiny humans thwart a takeover? Only time and bloodshed will tell. In Indian Hill 2, Reckoning. This is the Chronicles of Michael Talbot, the podcast. All right. Well, how is everybody doing tonight? Great. Good. Doing just fine. So your name's Bjorn, correct? Bjorn, correct. Yes, that is uh that's true. Yeah, that's All my right, first name. Sure I, making sure I pronounced it correctly. So so we got Bjorn, Hannah, and Summer. Excellent. So welcome guys. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having Thank us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. It's for you guys that I do this, I hope. We'll see. <laughs> oh, love it. So we all read Indian Hill 2, correct? Yes. We're all big Just fans. Oh. Mm. Awesome. Bjorn, I am loving the Jason mask in the background. Just let me state that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's actually signed by the first uh, actor who played Jason, Ari Lenman Lamb. Well, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right. but Now, is it the first person to play Jason or the first person to play Jason with the goalie mask? Because those are two first, different people. The first Jason, like Kid Jason. Oh, the we came out of the water at the end of the movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Now that's a deep cut. That's awesome. So, Thank you. So why don't we uh, go around the, the panel here and introduce yourself and how long you've been how long you've been reading Mark's stories and how you first discovered him. Let's start with Summer. All right. Yeah, I actually just started, I believe, last year. Um the audiobooks said, Hey, you listen to this. Why don't you try this and give me the first few hits for free, like any mm -hmm. good drug dealer? <laughs> and then, so I started with Zombie Fallout, went through that whole series. Uh, Mark's Merry Mayhem around, I think that came out at Christmas time or something, and then went into the Like and Fallout. And uh, I'm and almost, I'm, I have the fifth one, I believe, now to finish. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I, it's all on Audible. I don't have time to read. I drive four hours a day for work. Mm -hmm. What uh, what neck of the woods are you in? Uh, Union, Washington, right off the Hood Canal. Oh, so you're over on the uh, the other side of the country here from me. Yep. I still have sunlight. Yeah, it's, it's been dark here for a couple of hours now. So, <laughs> Bjorn, what about yourself? uh i found mark tufo about a year and a half ago when i first started uh commercial truck driving mm -hmm. uh, i got tired of listening to radio and some podcasts were just getting old and it got recommended to me because i'm a fan of the horror genre so i like zombies so zombie fallout i started with it and uh, just ran with it and i think i've gone through the series three or four times now and like in fallout indian hill shrouded world devil's desk all of that I can't get enough of it. And where are you from? Uh, Mobile, Alabama. Oh. And Hannah, what about you? Hey, um, I'm from New Hampshire, uh, southern New Hampshire. So I'm on the East Coast. And I was first introduced to Mark when I first started dating my now husband. He had audible and he shared it with me so me and my son could listen to a book that he gave us to go along with the story and next thing you know he's like hey you should definitely listen to these books if you like zombies and I was hooked hooked I've listened to everything probably like three times the Indian Hill series I just finished or I'm on for the third time so yeah he's a back since 2000 and 
oh gosh, five years ago. It's been a while. You're a big fan. Yeah. Which is, uh, what would you say is your favorite story? That's tough. I like them all so much for different reasons because it exposes different characters more. Mm -hmm. So I really liked Like and Fallout, though. I, I liked the kind of back kind of back in time but actually really just forward in time but midwestern kind of style with the lichens was really just it was fantastic excellent well we'll have you back on for the when we do the lichen fallout series because it's gonna intend i'm having difficulty filling those shows so <laughs> yeah i'd be honored awesome so so we're here to talk about Indian Hill 2. We're going to start going in. Uh, last week we did book one and we finished all that. So now we're starting with, uh, we're going to do book two tonight. So the book one, book two starts where book one ended. Now, when Mark wrote this, he never intended for there to be a second story. Uh, similar to, to J Jason, it was never intended to be a series as it has become. So you ended the first story thinking that's it. Mike escapes from the alien planet, has got the Supreme Commander hostage, and they're going home. You know, they get home and they're quarantined for 14 days. The army wants to debrief them and talk and do all that stuff. And I found it interesting, uh, similar to the to the to, to the Iron Man movies, that Mike's first meal that he wants is pizza. That's all he can die. For. All he wants is pizza. So I, I think my first question to all of you would be is if you were kept hostage on an alien vessel uh, for 18 months, what would your first meal back be? Summer, why don't we start with you? Uh, if I had my choice, I don't know if you all have ever heard of it, but it's uh, it, they're called Indian tacos. It's fry bread with chili. It's basically a taco on this bread you fry that's just so tasty, ridiculously horrible for you. No wonder why diabetes runs so much in our family <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah it's just big sloppy just uh, food that just makes you feel so good mm -hmm. okay. Bjorn, what about you oh well i'm not sure if it's part of a food group but uh and i'm surprised mike didn't go with it uh beer i would definitely the uh, biggest keg of beer you could get after being hostage for that long yeah i just want to get sloppy drunk probably <laughs> Just load it up with empty calories. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> I don't blame you. Hannah, what about you? I'd probably like a nice, like, hot plate of just Belgian waffles with, like, strawberries and whipped cream and maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple and sweet. Now, being from southern New Hampshire, would you get that from the Roundabout uh, Cafe? Oh, you've been there? I live in Massachusetts, so whenever we go north, I drive right by there. We stop. The breakfast bowl there is is absolutely the die for. It's awesome. So that's, that's like one that's of my great. favorite places to go. So <laughs> I have to say, if you're ever, um, you know, down in southern New Hampshire, check out Susie's Diner. What They're town's that in? Hudson. Okay. So is that by? Hudson, which side of Hudson is off the by, by like Tingsboro side, or is it more on the other uh, the Salem side? It's kind of like middle, okay, middle point. Yeah, I will check that out then. Definitely, always looking for good yeah. breakfast places. I love breakfast; it's our favorite food. Whenever we go north, we we try to stop at the roundabout, depending upon what time of day it is. But you know, like you know, it it's it, there's always a line out the door and it's always packed. But oh, the, food's yeah. always, the food's always delicious, so worth it. <laughs> um what did you guys like about the story what drew you to it um hannah one uh yeah start with hannah all right um honestly i loved how it started it was exactly what i needed because when you end the first book you're kind of like on the edge like well what's going to happen you know and then it just picks up and it gives you all the answers that you need and it satisfying so i want to keep going with the storyline and be like okay well what happens with beth and you know what, what just there's so many things 
that came to a head and now are following their own storyline after being on an alien ship. Mm -hmm. Summer. I'm just, I, I, it was great to get that continuance, but then what do you mean you, you, you shot Mike? Wait, what, what happened there? <laughs> and then, so I'm like, you go chapters and chapters of what the fruit is going on. This can't mm -hmm. be right. You know? Um, and then they pick up and then actually, you know, I, I, I learned to hate Beth down the road, but you actually see her all finally coming in being a little more stronger character, and, you know, stepping up and protecting Deb. And you're like, okay, maybe this gal is kind of cool. But then you start seeing her start twists like when she kind of mm. drove off with those guys arms in the car you know and then you're going okay wait a minute she may be getting a little crazy and then you see a uh with a paul who starts doing um some self-reflection of going is this when i'm becoming a tyrant or is this you know so you just started seeing them really it moved just a heck of a lot quicker than the first one i'd say i just and then it really just just couldn't get the next to the next one quick enough mm -hmm. and what about you Bion? Um, well, coming off of the first book, you know, super excited to get straight into it. Uh, since I haven't been in a book, like I just started, I just found Mark Tufo, I binged read it or listened to it. So going into the second one, like, like Summer said, Mike got shot and he was pretty much out of the book for three quarters of it. And so the first time I really didn't really enjoy the second one that much until I didn't appreciate it until I listened to it the second or third time. And I think my favorite parts now is watch or listening to Paul and how he goes from this college, uh, I don't want to say jock, but that's pretty much what he was in college and how he turns into a leader. And like Summer said with Beth, you know, you eventually everybody hates Beth, but seeing her, everybody's transition and how everything melds together into the second one altogether makes it a essential part of the series. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah i never started to like beth ever in this <laughs> in these books i mean from the get-go she was just to me she was just always that girl just stringing you along you know it wasn't mm. you, i'm on my third listen to it now for for the, the purposes of the show so i like i said last week i listened back at uh one and a half speed or 1.5 speed to to get the the gist of everything and some of the best stuff i was just i kind of you know, I, I, in Audible, you can skip ahead 30 seconds. I just kind of skip it. I'm like, all right, I know this bitch's story. I don't, I don't want to listen to her. She's Dick and Mike along. I don't like it. It's, yeah. I like you. Oh, I like you. No, wait, I don't like you because you like me. And then when Mike decides that he doesn't like her, she wants to go after him. She's your typical, I mean, some of you, I'm sure they have them in your neck of the woods too, but your typical, you know, New England, uh, you know, I don't want to say typical girl. girl, but she's that that popular girl that's always that's beautiful. Everybody's always loves her and kisses her ass. And if mm -hmm. I can't have you, nobody else can. But if everybody else wants you, I want to love you and I want to go after you. And we all know somebody like that, whether it's a guy or a girl, it, it doesn't matter. And I think I, I want to find out next conversation I have with Mark, who in his life, who is his Beth? Because <laughs> the first yeah. story, you, you're yeah. right. He wrote about what what you know, and a lot of the characters in the story are you know his real family members, real people that he knows. That, you know, there's a real Paul, there's a real Dennis, you know, his, his family members, all that. Who was his Beth? Mark had to have a Beth in his life, whether he wants to admit it or not, or one of his friends had a Beth. You know, so I never really liked Beth. That was a, a really long t tangent on her. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but i think I what it. i i like I yeah i like indian hill i think better than zombie follow and, and i've said it before i'm zombies all day all night you know everything in my house I, I i love it my music is dedicated to zombies and you know my house i always have a zombie movie on and my wife's like okay all right we'll watch dawn of the dead again okay <laughs> which version is this you know um but i liked indian hill because i like the uh the 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 I was going to say Indian, not Indian genre, alien genre of, of books. And I like how he incorporates real life stuff into his stories. Uh, you know, I used to work, uh, I drive a truck for a living too. So I'll drive through, I used to drive through Walpole. So I'd be like, oh, there's Walpole, there's that. There is no stop and shop in Walpole anymore. One of these days I want to go do a tour 
of all the areas that Mark talks about in his books and be like, you know, okay, this is from this, this is from this. There is no way in hell. And I, I made it in my notes and Hanna can probably attest to this as well, being from the East coast. When Beth and Debbie are coming through New York down the Mass Pike and they get to the New York line. I actually just drove that yesterday for work coming from uh, Albany, New York. And I, I took a picture of it and I posted it in Mark's group and on the uh, the Chronicles Facebook page. They get to, to Massachusetts and it's Massachusetts is shut down. You know, sorry, folks, parks closed. The bear out front should have told you type of thing. And then from there, they loop around to go up to the Kankamagas to come back into Massachusetts. If you don't know that area, they're nowhere near each other, you know, at all. That takes, <laughs> for someone to drive it, that's an easily a three hour drive. Now I'm not sure which way they went. If they went up through New York, up 91 and cut through Vermont, up to, you know, and you gotta go kind of on Maine because the Kankamagas is on the Maine side by Fry, Freiburg, Maine on uh rough route 16 in new hampshire get a map you'll know what i'm talking about but i'm just kind of babbling so i i, I want to ask mark again you know was this supposed to be realistic or, or or how did that work so in my head when i'm listening to these stories i'm reading it going or listening to it i should say okay that would happen that wouldn't happen okay this is hollywood eyes this is fictionized but i love the story because it's familiar to me the areas in it and i'm sure a lot of people um, like with Stephen King novels, he made up the town of Derry. Derry, Maine is supposed is Bangor, Maine. When you listen to a, a Stephen King novel, it's a fictitious. This is really, I think there's really a Derry, Maine. I know there's a Derry, New Hampshire, but the fictitious town with Mark, what he does is he gives it a real life place. And I like that about his stories. And I like the human side of it. And I liked that he talked about his childhood. And I know the beginning of Indian Hill, a lot of people had issues with it. The second book, they just come out swinging. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, Hunt, like Summer said, Mike's dead or Mike's gone. You don't know what happened to Mike. Mike gets shot. And you're like, okay, you just bumped off your main character a quarter of the way through the whole story. What is going on here? So in, in, a, in a long rambling sort of way, that's what I liked about the story. And that's what I like about Indian Hill in that series. Well, I think it's neat. Like, <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go oh, no, ahead. No. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Um, yeah. I have to agree with you, Jeff. I like, like, that's what drew me to a lot of these books is that it's like literally, I could, I could drive there mm -hmm. and see exactly what he's talking about, and yeah. I've pro and I've driven on the same roads that he mentions, and that just adds a whole nother level to it because it's like. Then I'll be driving those roads and I'll be like, what if that actually happens? Like, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I'm just, and I applaud him for that. Um, but yeah, that's all, that's what I just wanted to say about that. It's, it's pretty cool that he looped that in. Could I get there from here if this happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Summer, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say that I think it's neat that he really, Almost every character, even if they have just a small bit, he does a good uh, backstory of them to some memory or something that developed them early on. Um, like what he was just talking about, what is it, the Master General, um, you know, or uh, God, he flashed back to some things in his youth. The other one, when uh, they were going to Vail, Colorado and realized that it was vacated and then the... Um, the Junagerians or whoever are coming, um, he's doing some backstory to back when he was in Vietnam or some of these things about the wife. And then so you get, you actually get this very short period with these people, but you get to kind of know them and feel like, oh crap, no, you, you, I don't know. You get invested even when they have some characters that are in there for a short period. Mm -hmm. so, and I am no geography person, so I have no idea where the hell half the states are that they're <laughs> talking about. If it's if it's on the East Coast, I'm I'm pretty much I know where Florida is and and, and New Jersey because I got family there. But other than that, I'm just I have to go look at a map and figure out where you're all talking. A little more farther north, yeah, <laughs> from New Jersey. A lot more farther north from Florida. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> a lot more snow. Not this year. No. No, we didn't get 
wrap for snow this year. We really, you have to really go up into the mountains uh, this, this year, like in the North Conway kind of main mountains of Maine area. But yeah, we got, I, I didn't even, I busted up my shovel maybe twice this year. Yeah, we, we rarely get snow in this area and we got quite a bit where we needed snow shovels. We had needed roads plowed. Some days mm -hmm. we just didn't get out of the house. It's not, not common for us. Yeah. West coast got nailed this year. And it, it, by the time it got to us, a little bit of rain, maybe a little light <laughs> snow, but we, we didn't get nothing. So I'll take humidity and in, in mayflies any day over, you know, tornadoes, mm. hurricanes, and a, a yeah. you know, 15 mm. feet of snow. Which some parts of you can I, keep I got the humidity. Done. <laughs> what was that? You can keep the humidity. You can yeah. keep your humidity. <laughs> it's like a hundred percent humidity down here in oh, I bet. South Alabama all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> it's it's brutal down there. I've driven through it on my way yeah. to Orlando, which you know isn't much better with humidity. But yeah, I, I, I hear you. I'm not a humidity fan at all, but God bless air conditioning. So, <laughs> so. So we get to the story. I know we kind of skipped around a little bit, but um, General Burkhalter wants to recruit Mike into the military. They get released from the uh, from their their I'm saying incarceration, their quarantine. 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 Thank you. And you know, Mike gets in a, a transport troop, and Beth comes running up to him. I'm sorry, I love you, and blah blah blah, but I need time. Beth always needs time for stuff. Like, do you love him or do you not love him? Like, why do you need so much? time to think about this yeah the guy did horrible stuff up on an alien vessel because he was forced to no matter what and i hate to say it was like mitch he did it to get back to you yeah. because he wanted to be with you you know it's like yeah come on she drove me nuts no. <laughs> i i the line where he was like uh where she was gonna grab a gun and she was like mike you know i hate those things i was like Bitch, shut up and take the gun. Like, do you understand the situation that you were in? Like, come right. on. Come on. Do the you and You're not from New England. <laughs> so when you, because we read further and she makes alliances down the road with other people down the road. Did she do something to, am I over throw, did she do something to make, get to be that, the queen of the, the games? Or did they just, out of all these women that on all these humans that all look alike to them they can't tell the difference between them barely mm -hmm. they're like yes you are the most beautiful and we had to put you here did she do some weaseling ahead of time that nobody knows about yeah they never That's discussed that interesting um why she became the queen of the games i'd be interested to know that maybe when mark finally finishes the <laughs> series and writes a book yes. eight it continues with it uh we'll get to understand why that is you know maybe they'll do a a, a little flashback sequence as to what beth did or why they chose her as the queen of the games but for now it's just a mystery so we got a uh another guest on the oh. show hannah yeah my husky it's coming over to check things He's, out yep yep he wants to lay on the couch with me <laughs> after he's this whole time uh tore up his toy and I secretly got the squeaker out while everyone was talking. Was that ah. squeaking? Out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh. So everybody goes their separate ways. Uh, Mike gets a, a his, his own truck and nicely. No, it doesn't go. To, he goes up to Maine first. Excuse me, and um, goes up to see his dad. And dad's up there, and he, he talks to the family, and nobody knows that he was back in dad's out ice skating on the frozen pond up there in maine and sister comes out and then they call gary and ron and they never really talk about mike's other brother uh you talk about him a little bit but he's not really in any of his stories which i until last week i i didn't realize that there were three bro mike had three brothers and one sister i didn't know he was one of five oh, i Mike. always thought he was one of four you're talking about glenn right yeah, you learn something. Yeah. Uh, you know the the the, the third time around, because <laughs> he's uh he died early on in the zombie fallout. I mean, they never mentioned how he or if he's actually dead in the zombie fallout, but <clears throat> maybe he comes yeah, back they, in twenty. Yeah, because he has twins with with not Ron but Gary, right? Gary. Yeah. And then Gary just they had just said Gary's never been the same since he passed away, but then in this series, 
they just I think they mentioned him a little bit about like he helps work with the brothers once in a while but really mm-hmm. they gloss yeah. over him yeah I, I I heard it when they first said it he's like you know that Mike's got that he had three brothers I'm like wait three I'm like who's the third brother I didn't know what that was <laughs> so. but either way and then we find out a lot more about Paul Paul has changed from the stoner kid in college to full-blown semi-militia army marine military general in, in is organizing all these people up there in the, the 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 mountains of Colorado to avenge Mike's death he doesn't know he thinks Mike's dead nobody knows what happened we still find out that nobody really knows what happened at Red Rocks, they thought those people were, were killed, or vaporized or beamed up and just shot out into space with, you know, the rest of the spacecraft that's up there. They don't know, the nobody knows that they were kept hostage and he doesn't know that Mike is back just yet, um, which was kind of crazy. And I, I thought that the military would, would have a little more information and would, would tell, I mean, Paul's got his plants. He's got General Burkhalter and uh, whoever the, the the plant guy is that he has up there. You thought somebody would have leaked something, but I mean, this is the one time that the, the military was kind of hush hush, and you know we didn't have a wiki wiki links type of um, <laughs> t- t- spewing or a, a release of information. Um, so I like that that part about. I think the whole thing about the story. So I've, I lost my train of thought about five minutes ago and I was continuing to talk to try to figure, see if I can come back to it. And I just, I, I totally haven't. So my apologies. So it was, it was it all those, all those games of risk he was playing um, after the accident and the first one in the hospital and their nights of playing mm-hmm. risk. Isn't that all about strategy? And um, mm-hmm. yeah. I never played the game, but yeah, I, I have friends who did. Um, it was a long game to play. But nice. maybe that was that helped plant the seed, and he just felt he owed it to Mike since Mike saved his life, and maybe he was holding on to hopes that he was vapor. So was the band also sucked up? I don't I thought about that today. He never, he never touches base on that because there was <laughs> like thousands ship, of people so. got sucked up. Thousands <laughs> of people get sucked up, and they just widespread panic. Just I don't know what happened to them. They're just not there anymore. And then I saw somebody's post that allegedly they're going to Red Rock. And I'm like, oh, crap. Is this when it happens? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw <laughs> that thing post thing. from Mark. It. He's actually going to a three-day concert, widespread panic concert at Red Rocks in June. <laughs> they're playing in June. <laughs> so, like, that's that's life imitating art at its, at its finest there, kids. <laughs> so... <laughs> I have been Instagramming them every day whenever they post about the Red Rocks thing that they need to follow the book, the read Indian Hill one, because when I interviewed Mark and had him on the show, I asked him, does the band know about, you know, your story? Do you, do they know that you wrote this book about them and that you're such a huge fan? He's like, I thought I got it into someone, the manager's hands, but I'm not quite sure mark's very humble about this stuff i'm like well i'm gonna spam the shit out of him and somebody's <laughs> gonna know and somebody's gonna find out because that's what social media is all about that they're gonna know that this dude here is a huge fan of theirs he wrote a book where at their concert at red rocks that half of the population got sucked up and started a whole alien invasion thing at this concert venue that these guys are actually playing at which is just it's kind of crazy <laughs> I know Red Rocks is a huge destination, but somebody must know something in their camp. And they decided that that would be a cool thing to do. So he's hoping to get in on the, on the meet and greet uh, with the three. No. Are you people. investigating it personally? You're going to yes, find out who it I is. Am. That's my mission. Yes. I have, I have yes. nothing better to awesome. do with my time. So I'm, <laughs> I'm on the case. <laughs> so, uh, I asked this the past couple of times that we had it, but if you were at a concert, and it was your, you know, Desert Island concert band where it's, it was the last concert you're ever going to see because you're going to get sucked up into space. Which would that be? And which concert would it be that Scotty beam me the hell out of here? This, this concert's <laughs> absolutely horrible. Which concert would it be? 
Nobody wants to go first. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and go first. <laughs> um, one that I would just want to be out of there, just get me out, get me the hell out right now, would be uh, any type of new, new style country music. Uh, the hip hop. That's, that's what we call it down here. Uh, a lot of us still listen to the old school country music. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, my wife loves the new style country music. I cannot stand it. Um, that one, yeah, get me the heck out of here <clears throat> for sure. Okay. Hannah, what about you? Um, mine, would it, it makes me sound so old when I say it, but like <laughs> the new rap music that comes out, I just am like, I don't even know what they're saying. And then I'm like, wow, I sound like my parents, you know? Um, but yeah, I just just don't want to be there. Like, bring me back to old school rap, hip hop, not not this new stuff. 90s hip hop, you can't beat it in my eyes. <laughs> no, no, can't beat it. Yep. Summer, what about you? Yeah, the beam me out, I got to cre- uh, agree with Hannah. You know, we've got some proper 20 acres in off grid uh kind of close to canada over on the eastern side and all we have is a a radio that connects with canadian stations and on sunday morning it went to church station nothing against church but we switched channels and the only other channel was this hip-hop rappy bubble gum oh my god make it stop (laughs) is it canadian (laughs) hip-hop or I just crap. Um, no, I, I don't want to say the names of the artists. There, there are also American artists that I've heard. Uh, and it's just I cannot Break. change it quick enough. They're not listening to this. Don't worry about it. You can say. It. <laughs> I was like your your Nicki Minaj's. Your I just I I can't stand it. It's over. And, uh, I don't I'll know. Do yeah, and I sound maybe. like an old person. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a. Uh, I, I can't even remember her name. The the new big one. She's got a value meal at McDonald's. Right Lizzie now, Lizzo no not Lizzo the the other the other one that it's similar to a Nicki Minaj um mm. she used to be a, a a stripper and she used to oh Cardi Doge? Cardi B yes oh. that's her name yeah, yeah. so yeah. Cardi not a fan not a fan that's just me <laughs> so yeah. sorry yeah, I, yeah so I'd want to get the yeah. hell out of there pretty quick if you know I was ever on a first date and they're like oh we're going to a Cardi B concert i'd be looking for the alien ship if i can (laughs) so but i do recommend if you if you ever get a chance go to red rocks because it does look beautiful i've never been there but i've seen a couple of youtube videos and i watched bill burr's comedy special from there and it's wow it's pretty freaking gorgeous man so so mike joins the military uh general burkholt gives him the option of i'm going to give you a Humvee and he puts a uniform on the seat. Now he, Mike never fully admitted that he was going to join, but I think the general kind of had an idea that he was going to goes and sees his family finishes up with that. And then he goes out to Colorado to surprise Paul. And he has that moment where Mike sees Paul for the first time. And the, um, goes up there and the, the guys giving him crap all about everything. And, you know, it's the it's the typical I'm going to walk in Harrison Ford style with my Indiana Jones hat on. And, you know, you, you do the face reveal and Paul basically shits himself kind of and is ready to pass out because he sees his friend that is responsible for this whole thing that he's doing, his whole way of life, his whole way of changing, because Mike saved his life. Mike wouldn't Paul wouldn't be there if it wasn't for Mike because of what happened in the car accident. Uh, back in the day when they were kids after the Cheech and Chong uh, drive-in marathon where they just got so stoned and they fell asleep and, and hit a tree. Mike saves Paul's life. And Paul does all of this to, to help Mike and to honor Mike and it's Camp Talbot. He does all of this. And then he ends up shooting Mike <laughs> on day two that Mike is there. <laughs> and that's when the story for me, I sat back and I said, uh did he lose his mind what is going on why did he do this why did mark just kill off his main character or did he kill him off or what happened they never said shot and killed they just said shot but you don't know what he was shot with until 
chapter 14, 15. I, I didn't write that down in my notes what chapter it was, but you find out he's in France. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's where we send all of our people that we don't like anymore. <laughs> we go to France. But uh, what did you guys think about all? What, what was your first initial thoughts? Because mine in my head was, you know, basically what I just said. I was like, what? Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father? <laughs> <laughs> um is all right if i go first you already are i don't so want to lose right i don't want to lose my train of thought all right <laughs> um i really enjoyed the part where where uh mike was recruited it made it like had a nice touch of like a positive note on it and i found myself like smirking during that time and then when he was introduced to his family, like I found myself almost coming to tears when his father came up to him. I thought it was great. It was fantastic. Um, and the and the character development in Paul, I thought um, they, he did a great job with that. Very interesting. You never really know what you're going to get. And I think watching watching Paul kind of go crazy was something I didn't see coming the obviously the first time I read it um but then the second and third time I start noticing that he did just say he shot him but he didn't say with what and then slowly after I heard it say with a tranquilizer when he was in France I think he mentioned that so yeah. I was like oh okay so, but I didn't catch that the first time around. Um, but Paul's slip into this new version of him, it hooks me. It really does. Because you get to like see how he thinks as he's going down that path. Paranoid. Basically. Yeah. Bjorn, what about you? Mm. The first part of that, the recruiting phase of it was nice um but there's a big but if i was mike i'd take it as a form of disrespect that i was only given captain uh being you know military um and after you know mike going through everything that he went through you know going through the games fighting his way off the ship kidnapping the supreme commander and giving the government all that information I'd want something a little higher than captain personally, mm -hmm. if I was going to get recruited, but that's the only gripe I have with, it. you know, I think he did a lot more than he's getting credit for. Um, and I'm sure Mike would agree with me. Uh, but going off of that, Paul, I wanted, I, I wanted to smack him a couple of times when I was re-listening to it because it was irritating how many times he would use past tense. And then even with Dennis, he would, you know, he, Dennis was like, we're best friends or Ron. He just wouldn't say that Mike was still alive. Mm -hmm. I get the build up though. I get it. It's just irritating that he kept using past dance and trying to feed that Mike had died or was trying to play that. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm going to be honest. I forgot the question, but <laughs> to I, be honest, to I think I forgot it. what it was too. Uh, <laughs> Summer, what about you? Uh, yeah, the same thing. It's just, you know, I don't know why he couldn't just tell them what happened. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what risk that would have been to say, oh, yeah, we found out, you know, he ends up coming clean later. But I just I don't know why that had to be so closely guarded. So, yeah, that was like annoying and frustrating. Again, what do you, what do you mean you shot him? Um, how, how dare you? <laughs> don't you know who we're talking about? Yeah. Um, and then just I with all of it, it's just it's it, it's so funny it, because he it's such a there's so much sarcasm or cynicism in in so when they were like oh we want you as military i'm like do you because he's never been really good about you know um that structure or authority but then to Jordan's comment maybe that's why they were like captain he's not necessarily gonna be responsible for people and he's only reporting this one guy and we so maybe that's why you know I, i'm not sure and maybe is mike not that familiar with what military uh levels are and may not have known that was a high rank or yeah. not a high enough rank 
I found it interesting, and I didn't pick up on this until the third go around, that Mike's quarantined and examined by all of the the doctors and stuff back at the quarantine base with General Burkhalter, but you don't nobody discovered that he had foreign objects in his body, maybe because right. they were organic substances behind his eye in his ear and one in his i think it was his spine where the tracking device was but paul ends up finding it when he gives him an mri or something he's the one that finds out with his ragtag band of merry men out there in the middle of colorado <laughs> that mike is is, 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 a, is a spy unintent unknowingly unwittingly willingly mike's a spy for the for the enemy for the aliens but the greatest military in the world with all of our technology, they didn't figure that out after having him there for 14 days, doing all their tests and doing everything. Paul finds out after day day one of Mike being there. Yeah. You know, the, 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 is Paul a better general or a better leader <laughs> or a better planner than General Burkhalter or our entire military down at the Pentagon? Who knows? But he's got my vote. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah I was wondering how they don't catch him. I'm sorry, Summer, what were you saying? Oh, I just, I mean, I, they... it was just. <laughs> the other <laughs> Summer. <laughs> I was just, that was the same thing. Is how did the military not, when they were doing through all this, they're saying scientists, so were they, didn't they, they not have medical personnel there to be checking them? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was just really, um, not that the federal government or has ever made mistakes in processes. So Never. I mean, ever make a mistake <laughs> no. everything is top notch they just continue to do a great job and never go with the lowest bidder for contract services so ever they get the most <laughs> qualified people that are going to do the best job no matter what the cost absolutely pay the big bucks yep <laughs> pay the big bucks <laughs> Anna, what were you going to say um when they came down like like you said they were scientists like maybe they just i don't know didn't think that he would have been implanted like they I it depends on the story that or what Mike told them and at the time they didn't know until he was briefed they wouldn't so think to, I don't know to look for something like that yeah plus but it's like organic point, so yeah. but you, I'm Sorry, you can go. No, I'm just saying, like... but Hannah, to your point, you're right because um, maybe the organic portion of it, because, but you know, he had to have told them about the go go juice they kept pumping him and everybody through. So you'd think that they would have gone, ah, what else did they put into these people so that they could rebound as quickly or, you know, so. Did he get the go the go go juice before, what, before he came down, or was it the second time he went up? I thought because uh, between fights, because remember the people were dying and they didn't want the fighters dying, uh, even though they won, they were still dying. So weren't they giving them some sort of weird stuff? Because yeah. like Durgan, they shot him up with who knows what kind of alien steroids. I don't know if it was a yeah. go-go juice, but I think it was um, before he left the first time from the mothership or um, the recon ship, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it was a go-go juice because the second time he went up there, that Progerian was giving him that to compete with Durgan. Now, the first yeah, go around yeah. was a medical stuff so he could regenerate and he like slept a lot more. So I don't know. Uh, I would assume that the federal government that tested him, the scientists, were only taking blood samples and seeing how he reacted now that he was on back on Earth again. I don't I mean, unless Mark tells us, we won't know if they were doing MRIs on him or anything like that. So. But uh, Jeff, you are you are right. Uh, I do remember the part of the book when it comes back to Mike, and he was in France. The doctor said that the tracking that in his eye, his orbital socket, and his spine was organic material because they couldn't just do surgery to get it out. They had to, uh, I believe he said, shake the little bugger to death. So, Literally, they shook yeah, the little yeah. bugger to death. Mm. So. Yeah, maybe that's that's why they didn't see it. And the only reason they found it is because Paul thought in his mind, his suspicious mind in how it worked, that they didn't just let him go. There's got to be a reason why 
they didn't just shoot them out of the sky, not because of the Supreme Command who was on the ship with them or anything. There's got to be, they didn't come thousands of light years to Earth to let one guy go to just not let it happen. He has to have something inside of him. So I think that's where Paul, as a leader, uh, I don't want to say justified. He, um, I can't think of the word, but he he, he solidified. He hey, it's, a big, it's a big word. I, you know, I went to public school in Massachusetts. He solidifies <laughs> himself as a genu, genu, genuine, bona fide leader in his thoughts and, and everything that he can do that. And I, I'm going back of based off, you know, how much pot he smoked back in college, that people that say that pot is bad for you and makes you dumb. Paul's living example that you know, it makes you think smarter than the greatest military in the world. My opinion. You're not wrong. Okay. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> so, but we also get into, and a lot of the story at the end of this book is uh, a Beth and Debbie tale where Beth calls Debbie and I need to see you. We need to talk. And, you know, I miss Mike. So Beth and Debbie are on a pilgrimage to go find Mike. Uh, Debbie's parents get killed at their local supermarket, which I've always thought that if the shit hits the fan and, you know, this happens, and we almost saw this two years ago with the great toilet paper run of 2020, <laughs> that people will be out for themselves no matter what. It's all for one and one for me and nobody else. Screw you. I got a flatbed full of Charmin. And I don't care what you wipe your butt with, doesn't matter to me. You sandpaper, toilet paper, uh, you know, the one ply Scott or paper towels. I'm doing this for me. So when uh, Debbie's dad and mom go to a supermarket just to get some minor supplies, they get turned away. They have people inside the store, including the owner or the manager that knows who they are. They've been there shopping there for years. There's always that one bad element or, or, or person that is going to say, no, this is ours. You can't have it. We're not going to share. We don't play well with, with others. Do you all think that if, if, if it hits the fan that people will resort to that? Or is it like regular society where you'll have some bands of people that are trying to do good and people that are just, you know, you, you get the, uh, the, the, the Gary Higgins type of guys that just, wants to go and just, you know, rape, kill, murder, and just rob and beat up anybody because you're pissed off that high school is over and you're not as popular as you were anymore. Hannah, you're shaking yes. your head. Yeah, I think he's right. People teeter on the edge every day. If you, I mean, I would see it happening. I feel like we would get the bands of people helping others after the shit hits the fan and then there's some semblance of community but at first it will or would be everyone for themselves because everyone's like oh my god my family got to get back to my family wait it, it, it that's all that matters at that time so yeah i think he like in my mind that's at least what i would think exactly what would happen you had the flatbed truck full of toilet paper, didn't you? I did not. <laughs> I did not. I was, listen, I got COVID back in March of 2020 mm -hmm. before anyone knew what to do with me. They were just like, stay home forever, basically. That's it. Just don't go out. Stay home forever. <laughs> Don't talk to anybody. Don't breathe on anybody. No. Put this mask on your face and don't go anywhere. Yeah. 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 There you go. Summer, <laughs> what do you think? You're from the Pacific Northwest where uh, the whole thing that happened with Seattle, um, you know, happened during the whole COVID, COVID days and I, I, Riots. I, don't what, I don't know what happened up there, but, you know, they just, I watched some YouTube videos of some guy walking around with hockey pads and a, a spiky bike helmet protecting two blocks saying you can't come in here or video We've taken this over. I'm like, dude, this is not going to end well. How long do you think this is going to last? 
and that you're yeah. going to be able to, to do this. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, and we're a bit of, I guess, what you call preppers since before even reading these things. And I remember a neighbor was laughing at me because I had um, vacuum sealed toilet paper. <laughs> and part, and, and so part of it was because I got a vacuum sealer and I was just vacuum sealing everything. And I thought it was funny how it squished so flat. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, look, I have two cases of toilet paper right here. And he had laughed. Well, then fast forward when we got to 2021, he's like, oh my God, you had such foresight. And I'm like, no, it was cool watching it go. Whoosh. It's just like, <laughs> when you, it's like when you microwave a, one of those stupid peep candies in yep. the microwave you know it's just it gets bit you know it's i'm i'm 15 year old 15 years old at heart i but just no, like vacuum even, sealing stuff yes <laughs> um so but then fast forward to yeah we're having all we had all the riots portland seattle um we have people we have just tent cities along the freeways and the highways uh and we I, so i work regulating a, a casino and um, most, uh, well, the whole country shut down. Well, tribal casinos, they're sovereign nations. So they got to make some decisions of their own and they reopened way before a lot of other places. And so since they were like the only gig in town, people were coming from some of these areas. So they would get done rioting in Portland and then come to these casinos. And you would see people getting into knockdown drag out fights over who's wearing a mask or who isn't. Wow. And it was like, what the hell is wrong? I mean, it brought out just the ugly in humans. And it's like, it, it constantly, like the world has lost its mind. And this was just, I mean, just COVID, but I mean, this wasn't aliens coming down. <laughs> there was no like, let's band together and work together on this. It's just one person's opinion and what they feel is right versus someone else's. Mm -hmm. this is my little box this is mine i mean you see people you see the karen videos where people lose their mind over not getting enough uh, or getting too many pickles on their hamburger or <laughs> not enough is that such or, a thing can you have too many pickles on a hamburger <laughs> no. oh, I was just... can we reference back to the pickle fiasco at mcdonald's i flip yes. and love that part <laughs> that's what i was going it's for my favorite me and my son will just listen to it some days because we just laugh so hard. <laughs> so when uh, Dennis, when Paul, excuse me, he said something about, you know, hey, we're going to town. Oh, by the way, go stop at McDonald's and get the guys a bunch of burgers. Was it like the same McDonald's? That would have been hilarious God, if he had a story. <laughs> Tie it back in somehow, Mark. Did those two stories intersect with each other? Like, I think the the pickle the McDonald's story was a Talbot so in one of the early zombie follow-up books. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the twins come back too. Right. Yeah. That's right. I, gotta, I haven't gotten that far yet. I see the. <laughs> I watch a movie once. I can remember the whole thing. If I listen to an audio book, like I really have to pay attention as to what's going on. Cause I do it while I'm driving all day and you know, I'm kind of spacing off and I'm like, Whoa, back up. What just happened? <laughs> so I'm listening to stuff for the third time now and I'm picking up on stuff. I didn't pick up on the first go around, which is kind of baffling my mind. So I'm looking forward to, you know, hearing more about the twins. So. I won't give anything away. No. I appreciate that. Thank you. Bjorn, what do you think? You think society would, would, would fold. They come oh, together yeah. and unite. Uh, no, I definitely think society would fold first mm -hmm. uh, rather than unite. That would come at a later time. Uh, or it folding in on itself would definitely overshadow them uniting. Uh, besides COVID, I can, you know, think back to Katrina when Hurricane Katrina oh. happened since I've lived in the South most of my life. Uh, a man got shot in the head over a bag of ice in Louisiana. Wow. So, um uh, during Hurricane Katrina, there was people, um, I know it's going to be uncomfortable, but they were getting raped in the Superdome during mm -hmm. Hurricane Katrina. So that definitely, I definitely think that would happen. It'll overshadow uniting, people uniting together. So um, I wasn't a toilet paper hoarder. I was lazy and procrastinating, by the way, during COVID. So I actually had hit up my mother during COVID. And I was like, hey, can you spare a couple rolls? I didn't go to the store. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, to answer the question, definitely it would fold in on itself before anything good would happen. 
So we had just moved into our house in January uh, before everything happened. We got oh, no. uh, a bidet attachment for our toilet, which is <laughs> the greatest thing in the world. So we went through like no toilet paper at barely any at all. And it, I mean, me and my wife were kind of health freaks. We eat super clean. So I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm like a two wipe Charlie and it's, you know, I'm like an animal out of nature, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. Okay. So we don't go through a lot of toilet paper in our household. So when we saw people at the BJ's, you know, or the Walmart just with carriages, I'm like, really? Do you, this, it's not the blizzard of 78, you know, it, it, I don't know, Hannah, how old you are, if you remember that, but every snowstorm we get up here now in new England they compare it to the blizzard of 78 where we got like five feet of snow <laughs> dumped in a brief amount of time. And it was unexpected. There were cars banded on the highway and everything like that. So every time it snows, everybody rushes to the store. They buy milk, they buy bread, they buy eggs. Now, toilet paper. So yeah. And eggs. And it's like, you're not going to be stuck in for days. You know, everybody thought when COVID hit that we were going to be stuck in the house and there's going to be, supply chains and they weren't going to make toilet paper and they weren't going to make this. So everybody was just stocking up and, but maybe you never know that. So when my wife was saying the same thing, she's like, we should maybe stock up on some canned goods or on water or something, just in case something does happen. You know, I'm, I'm a truck driver. So I know that we're working no matter what, it doesn't matter. People are going to make stuff. People are going to deliver stuff. So, and I took toilet paper for my job. Don't tell my boss that I did that, but I don't work there no more. So it doesn't matter. So um, <laughs> that's just the way it is. <laughs> that's the way it was mm -hmm. back then. But side story on this. I first started listening to Mark back in 2020, uh, Bob, was, was Zombie Fallout. when, And I first read uh, ZF Zero. And that's when he was talking about the H1N1 virus and the vaccine shots and the flu shots. And that's what turned everybody to it. So when the vaccine started coming out and they're talking about this, I'm like, oh, no, no. I, I read a whole book about this. You ain't getting me. You know, and I, I messaged Mark. I'm like, dude, are you a, a, a soothsayer? Do you know what's going on? Because this is just way too freaky that this shit, you know, is, is, is coming on right now. Turns out he didn't know anything. It was just a clever story and his, you know, Warped but he he, he said that and then the whole red rocks thing is now happening like yeah can you give us the what? lottery numbers Mark? seriously you know what what's what's the powerball jackpot let's go come on Mark i'll have Tufo's a quick side story where i'm very <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah well i think with the simpsons when you have that many episodes something is bound to come come true no matter what yeah <laughs> So I miss watching The Simpsons. I used to love watching that show when I was younger. But that's a different show altogether. So <laughs> um, I like in this story that the jock that, I hate to say, you know, trigger warnings, people, that rapes Beth, not Beth, uh, Debbie, when she was in high school, gets an ax to the back of the head, you know. Kudos yeah. on on that one. He got what he deserved. I, I don't condone murder. I condone revenge or, or any of that stuff. But some people, yeah, you rape somebody and you're mean and you're bad and you're doing all that stuff in an apocalyptic, fictitious story. Sorry, you're going to get an ax to the back of the head. That just Plus, that, he went after her. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they didn't approach it. They, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, look at poor Deb, though. I mean, from ninth grade onward, she's pretty much had a shit just land on her from that psychopath to okay let's get abducted on this ship let's deal with all this bullshit then i lose the guy then i have his neurotic girlfriend come into my life <laughs> then the guy who tried raping me when i was in ninth grade is back after i after see my, my you know died. after i guess not to mention murdered. her fiance died yes oh yeah <laughs> like i love beth but i mean uh deb, deb. i love deb i was yeah. i was like why couldn't it have been Beth? Yeah. <laughs> like I was sad when Steph oh, died so and I was sad when 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 Deb died. So because you find out Deb, Deb went out well. I'm sorry. I said Steph Hannah. went out well. Oh yeah. Yeah, she definitely did. So yeah. Because uh yeah. I mean Deb gets shot by the National Guardsmen, like we talked about earlier, coming in from New York when um and just the one rogue 
National Guardsman just oh, what was something name? about him that he just wanted to 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 save them, to protect them and Sergeant Polito. Two girls. Yeah. yeah, Sergeant Polito. He just takes it upon himself. And again, he falls in love with Beth. What is it about her that is just driving men crazy that <laughs> he basically endangers his he, he leaves his troop, uh, his command post. He's got a wife in in kid or kids, and he's running around with Beth, and she's like, Mike, Mike, Mike. I don't get it. I never understood that. I never understood. Me neither. But, no, I don't know. Must be a pheromone thing. <laughs> Probably. She's got to be doing something right. So, uh, side note, real quick, while we're talking about Deb, mm-hmm. Beth, and Gary Higgins. Yep. Uh, I just, I got to know from Mark's perspective here or not perspective. What was, if it was a brain fart, because I had to, I re-listened to it three times today. I had to replay it back on audible where uh, Deb or one of the two, I think it was Deb saw Gary about to come. They just kicked through the door and she sees him about to come through her front door. She describes it as Michael Myers stalking like on Friday, the 13th. Yeah. I want to know if that was a brain fart or what happened with that? How did, uh, because. (laughs) Because Michael Myers isn't in Friday the 13th. So I was just curious. I thought that thought that too. But maybe that was Beth or Deb not relating the two stories. Or maybe Mark just doesn't know horror movies. And the editor didn't pick up on that or, or whatever. So I had that happen in a Trivia Pursuit question once. We, they were doing the, uh, it was an 80s edition. And the question was, what color is Freddy Krueger's sweater? And Mm -hmm. as everybody knows, like good Americans, we know that Freddy Krueger has a dirty red and green sweater. Well, the answer on the Trivia Pursuit question was red and black. And I got it wrong. And I contested it to my friends. And they all said I was crazy. And, you know, it was high school, so they didn't care. But it's little (laughs) things like that in books. It's like, you know, okay, Michael Myers wasn't in Friday the 13th. That would have been pretty cool to see a, you know, a, a mm-hmm. Michael versus Jason because the Freddy versus Jason movie, just don't get me started on that one. It was horrible. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, would have been so much better. But it's the whole, how do they get into Massachusetts from the New York border on the Mass Pike up to the Kankamagas Highway? Who knows? They just do. So uh, with enough stuff that's coming true, maybe they are doing a Friday the 13th with Michael Myers. They seem to be bringing (laughs) all these, these these childhood memories back and crossover stories. So it would be, it would be quite interesting to see, but yes, good point Bjorn. Thank you. I had that in, I have that in my notes uh, as I'm scrolling through, I had that point in there as well. I hadn't gotten to it. So that's perfect. (laughs) Was there anything else that anybody picked up like that? That was a little different, or is that the only little flub? I'm going to take that as a no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, so we find out that Mike's alive. He's in Paris. He's at the Bastille. He thinks it's the prison, but it's the prison hospital, the Bastille hospital. They run all kinds of tests on him. They're trying to get him back to normal. He's kind of seeing visions of Paul. Some places shooting him, Pajarians and things like that. And then we find out that the Pajarians get themselves back in order and they're coming down and they're going to start. They're proving Paul right because the places that Mike was at, that gets attacked. They, yes, go ahead, Summer. So did they, because so, there was one really short snippet between the chapters where there's like these two guys and he opens the box and the guy goes, shut the box. And he's like, well, I'm sick of this spy stuff. And he's like, well, it could contain plutonium. And they said whatever their corners were. And then it cuts straight away to the Bergerians of go, we just got a signal. It lasted for 10 seconds. What's in the box? Was that like the things they removed from my, what, what was that? Because then afterwards, that's where they start doing the attack on, on Paris or France. I thought, anybody remember that? I do. It was like B four two or something like that that they they opened. It was a, yeah. a one page uh, page chapter. It was very brief. Yeah, and they get the signal, and then they're going to do the thing, and I'm just like, well, wait, wait, where is this 
PB and J 147 or whatever it was. And I just, yeah. I, it's like, what was in the box? What signaled it? So that's where I got it. Yeah. They got their Brad Pitt and seven moment. What's in the box? Come on. <laughs> so, um, that very well could be, they did ever really state that, but based on what happens with the Progerians, it's got to be a, a sensor or mm-hmm. a remote, or is it just coinciding with, with Mike coming out of the yeah. Bastille or, or whatever, but whatever it is, we find out that they know where something is and they go and they yeah. attack it and they f- destroy all of the military installations. They destroy all the major cities. They destroy where Mike was. They destroy Colorado, uh, the base up there. And that's when Bob Paul moves everybody to Indian Hill because he knows for some reason Paul knew that if the aliens come down, they're going to attack major cities. They're going to attack military bases. They're going to do all of this stuff. So he, they're fortifying Indian Hill into this underground bunker that is off the reservation, so to speak, that, that isn't on the map, isn't in military installation, that they're not going to think, okay, this is a secret military base with a, a ragtag band of merry men. The, the militia that they're going to go there, that they're safe. How does Paul know all of this? He had smart weed in college, is my <laughs> assumption on that one. I don't know. but Did he also do this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those, those, don't, those open the mind to broaden those bigger thoughts. <laughs> yeah. He went into the uh, the shaman teepee temples with the psilocybin and, and the mushrooms and the peyote and went on a spirit quest and had a vision yeah. that all of this was going to happen. So, but they do find Mike and they start destroying Paris and some people will say good and some people will be sad by that. Uh, I mean, either camp, it doesn't matter to me. I'm your typical American. If it's happening over there, it's not happening here. Fine by me. Uh but I'm I'm just kidding. That's not really how I think. Uh, but they destroy the Eiffel Tower. There's a big crater where the Eiffel Tower is, and they're telling they're they're announcing to the 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 people of Paris, we know Michael Talbot is here. Give us you got 24 hours or however long they give you. Give him to us, or we are going to level your city. Mm. And the call goes out for Mike's head. And the townspeople grab their pitchforks and torches, and they're on a mission to get this American out of their country and give them back to whoever, because they don't want to see their city destroyed. So would you guys give him up? If it was a real life scenario and it's he's it's him or it's one. The, 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 a lot of the theme in this, this story is one for the many. You know, do you sacrifice the one for the safety of of the many? And I think a lot of people did, but he got protected by the doctors and the military from the people that worked with Paul. Uh, you know, he had some kind of transcontinental connections where the doctors and the nurses were protecting Mike. Um, I... I don't know personally if I would do something like that. I've, I've never been in that situation where I've had to do that. So I probably would, but who knows? Uh, I hope never situation. to be put in that situation. Sorry, Bjorn. I just had to get that last part. Out. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> um, in a realistic situation, I'm pretty sure any one of us would turn Mike over, especially since, you know, they refer to him as earth champion and he's already killed all these people and during the Gino Jerians and everything, he can handle his own. I mean, it's Mike fucking Talbot. He's got be I am out there. But uh, me knowing what I know now in that situation, I'd be like, no, nah, that's, that's the homie. I'm a ride or die with Mike Talbot. <laughs> me not knowing Mike. Yep. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. <laughs> Get him out of here. You know. Summer, what would you do? You know, I, those aliens just have already obliterated pretty much every major city. What really makes me think turning one guy over is going to change any of that? Yeah. I would have, I would have already been out of those cities at whatever remained at that point and try to get as far away from something I would think as possible. I'd like to think I wouldn't turn somebody over, but you know, 
rules reversed. It's just this French guy that's over here. We don't even know. He's not even of our our country. You know, who knows if you know those alliances hold true when it's outside of your your country. I mean, you go back to um, September 11th. All of a sudden, everybody was pro American who was America and was very much screw the rest of the world. We got to protect us. Yeah, maybe there's a little bit of that when it comes to uh, a nation. Could be. Hannah, what about you? Um, if I had to make a call like that, I mean, I would give give them up. I would. I mean, just think of the amount of people that are in that city that would have been obliterated. You know, I don't know them personally, but, you know, that's kids, that's moms, that's sisters, like that people I don't know, but they still matter. So... I would. I I think sacrificing the one for the many would definitely be what I would do. Yeah. Well, if you find out that Mike decides I'm I'm not worth having all these people die and he gives himself up and he goes to the crater that is that used to be where the Eiffel Tower was and he does what he never thought he would do. He goes back up on the ship and they're going to have their battle and he's going to fight Durgan and come hell or high water. You're not stopping the Progerians, no matter how much you, you plead. If there's an alien invasion coming, they're coming no matter what Uh, they're going to roll through you. They're going to destroy it. Um, You know, it doesn't matter what you say. It's, it's not the whole, Oh, Wait, if you do this, we won't we won't come or or be, we did this because you didn't do this. It's it's crap. They're going to come no matter no matter mm-hmm. what. Bad people don't need a re an excuse to do a bad thing. They just do it for the hell of it. And that's what they're going to do and that's what the Pajarians are doing. And Mike knows that. And he gives himself up willingly. He sacrifices the one for the many, which is what makes Mike, the hero that we all love. Uh, so he goes back up to the ship to fight Durgan to do their one last battle. And similar to the the military people in book one, where they fly the nuclear uh the 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 ship with the nuke onto the 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 mothership, they have no reservations about or thinking that they're gonna come out of this alive and they sacrifice themselves to try to help out. And that's what, that's what Mike's doing. And I, I think, you know, I applaud him. I think he's an honorable character for that. I think there would be real people that would act like that, that would do that for, uh, for humanity. I know I would do something like that for my family. I mean, there's certain family members I probably wouldn't do it for, but <laughs> for the most part, I got some family that I would do that for. And they broadcast it live pay-per-view coast to coast, free you know fight night earth champion michael talbot versus or the, he's not even the earth champion yet because he hasn't fought durgan durgan's still from earth mm. uh who's it gonna be but um he fights a one-legged durgan because durgan's leg got shot off or vaporized however you, you <laughs> want to do it at the end of book one when mike escaped but he's got a bionic leg on him now and he is you know like we've said he is pumped up with the the alien go-go juice you know he's been eating his wheaties and taking his vitamins and drinking his creatine protein shakes and it's it's fight night you know it's it's kong versus godzilla and they're up there and they're gonna they're gonna battle um were any of you voting for durgan at any point thinking let's 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 go for the underdog maybe (laughs) all right good um because we're all happy to see that asshole die i'm gonna be honest yeah Yeah. yes yeah i was not uh in either book i was happy to see the you know either story i was happy to see to see durgan die i think it's great and it, it it sets the scene for the third book that when mike beats durgan uh spoilers there nobody applauds there's total silence in the arena and the only person yeah. or or being that applauds is and i'm going to pronounce the name correctly as mark originally wrote it and heard it in his head was drababan 
Um, not sure if you heard the episode where Drababen, that was how Sean translated it and Mark never corrected him, but his name originally Mark in his head had it as Drababon. And he's the only I one that applied. Yeah. Uh, he talked about it in the first episode uh, that we did. He went into a whole big thing where uh, he talks about it, uh, how he, he heard the, the character's name in his head when he was writing it was the, the, the way it was spelled was Drababon. It's kind of like, it's the Kankamagas Highway, but people say Kankamangas Highway. It's like there's no <laughs> NG in Kankamagas. It's but people just because Mang and Kang rhyme, that's how they do it. But if you listen to authentic New Hampshireers from up there and you know, the Hampshire Public Radio and White Mountain National Radio, they all say Kankamagas. So it's yep. Drababon, kids, not Drababon. But Sean, we still love you. You still can do no wrong in our eyes. You just that one you know, teensy little thing you messed up on, buddy. Sorry. So um, I'm, I'm happy the way the book ends. It it still doesn't end with a, this is, there's going to be a, a book three because it's just Mike wins, Drababin applauds, roll the credits. What did you guys all think about the ending, How it how it ended? Did you think there was going to be a book three? I mean, if you were reading it in chronological order, I mean, if, if it's in your audible queue, you knew there was a book three, but you were wondering how it was going to end. Were you were you happy with that ending? Summer, you look deep in thought up there. Let's start with you. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I feel terrible for people who were reading the books as they came out, because then you know, I know that at, at that ending, I'd be like, wait, ne- wait, now what? wait wait you know but I got to jump into three I'm glad it ended that way but it was sort of a okay well, what's next and mm-hmm. it did definitely leave me I need to read the next I need to hear the next one um you know because it there was no way he was supposed to win again against him but again Michael Talbot in his whatever luck powers that be just make the odds in his favor it, it happened and so yeah no I was really happy that he somehow pulled that out yeah, Mike is the quintessential definition of having a horseshoe up your ass. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very lucky man. <laughs> yeah. So, Bjorn, what do you think? Oh, the ending of book two. If I had uh, to listen or read it as it was coming out, I probably wouldn't have been too, you know, I'd, I've been excited, but like on the edge of my seat, you know, ready for uh, Drive a Bond to fight Mike. Uh, what was going to happen with that? Um, but luckily, you know, I found Morgan after that was all out. So mm-hmm. definitely just as soon as it was over, I was racing on my phone trying to get it started on the next book. So just ready, <laughs> come on. Faster, I'll buy the faster. three extra credits for forty dollars. Let's go. <laughs> I, I, Goddamn spoiler alert. crack dealers. <laughs> spoiler alert. We did not wait for our extra credit. We definitely bought several credits for Mark Mark Dufo's books. Yeah, my 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 Apple app Apple Pay Apple Card account is uh if you look at the transaction history, it's a lot of audible extra credits. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I wish that uh sorry, Hannah, go go ahead and then I'll uh, No, you go ahead. I was you just go gonna ahead. say I, when I was talking to Mark, I was like, I wish you could get paid like how they do streaming music. If you got a percentage every time somebody streamed your book and listened to it, I'm like, you would be probably one of the richest men in America where they he just gets a flat rate. He gave me the breakdown on how he gets paid when I met him last summer up at the uh, the 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 Hollywood Casino up in Maine, and because I I asked him I said how do how do I not that I'm gonna save anything or make anything great but you know I I want to make sure that you're getting the maximum payout which for which uh, format or which device or which uh, outlet gives you the the biggest percentage of it and he said kindle i believe he said kindle i, I had a couple of beers in me at that time but, but uh either kindle or ebook he gets the highest percentage of um of payout for that and i think audible he does well he's not starving you know as you can tell by chloe she's very well fed um but you know she's on a diet but he uh like with the music industry, you know, if, if I sell a song or people stream a, a song, one of my one of my songs, I get I look at my breakdown. It's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny each time a song gets streamed on one of these streaming services. 
So it's, I'm like, do I buy the books directly from you? Can I buy the book? You know, if I buy it from Audible, he gets as, uh, I, I don't want to say it wrong, but I think you get, you know, here's the book. We're going to buy the rights to it. Thank you very much. Go write the next one. So uh, I forget why I went off on this tangent about how markets paid <laughs> and how Audible <laughs> pays their artists and things like that. But, oh, that if, you know, each time I listen to it, if you get a percentage of it, that would be cool. And I think they, sh they should do that. Thank you. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Right. Uh, Hannah, what do you think about the ending? Oh, um, first time I read it, it was a lot. Like, I really liked the um, little hints that him and I, I'm going to say Drabavon because that's what I'm used to. Um, that like they're going to have a little something more than hatred for e for each other, mm -hmm. kind of like camaraderie. I thought that was a that was a nice touch. So it def that I was like um, character development. Kind yeah, of like they had a conversation that where they coming. became friends. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I skipped over yeah. that part. That while they're up on the ship. Drababon, oh, Drababon, fuck, I'm saying it wrong now. Uh, <laughs> befriends Mike before the fight with Durgan. And, you know, it's, it's, you, you're rooting for Mike to win. But then at the same time, like, oh, crap, you got to fight your friend. You know, you, you become friends with this alien being that is bred and, and, and its, its sole purpose is to kill you in these games. And they parade him around. And when Mike talks to the, 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 whoever the guy was that was betting all the stuff that gave him the tour of the ship. He asked what happens if, what happens if I win? It's, you're just going to continue to do this to on other worlds. You're going to be our champion and we're just going to, you know, you're our bitch. We're going to, you're our slave. Mm -hmm. You're our gladiator. You know, you're, you're, you're Maximus the great. We're just going to continue to play in the games with you. And, you know, he has his, his gladiator moment, you know, where he's like, are you not entertained? Is this what you want? And, you know, he's killing people. That's basically what they're going to have him do for the rest of his life. Is is that a life that you would want to do? If it meant living, but you have to continue just killing people and, and being a slave, would you want to do that? I, I think I'd get sick of it after a while. My My opinion, that's just me. No, yeah, I definitely feel like if any one of us said, yes, I would like to do that, it Kind of relate to Durgan at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I couldn't do that the rest of my life. No, just no. fighting and killing and being somebody's slave. No. That's and I'm sure that's why though. he, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, because if he didn't choose to keep going, there never would have been a story. So he has to be that character where, of course, he's going to choose to keep going. But in real life, if we were in his shoes and didn't have like family ties, really, like he didn't have kids at the time or um, anything like that. So if, you know, I, I wouldn't have kept going if I had to just keep killing people over and over and over again. And I had someone tell me that I'd be like, gosh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But of course, that's his character. Mm -hmm. Now, once he once he was no longer fighting, kind of protect all the girls, and now he's fighting Durgan because you that one you would want to continue because he's just an a hole that needs to get what's going. You know, if, if there's a chance I could take him out, yes, I need to. But then after that, it's like, okay, this is I I don't have skin in this game at all. I'm just your play toy for entertainment, and there's just no, yeah. Yeah, either the other person kills me or you kill me because I won't participate because it's just done now at this point. Yeah. No. Uh, final thoughts while we wrap them things up. Um, anybody have any or is there something that we didn't touch base on that you were like, I'm going to mention this and I really want to talk about this. Floor is yours. I just want another Indian Hill book. Everybody does. Mark, <laughs> did you hear that? More Indian <laughs> Hill. Continue the story. I might be reaching here. Um, I, I do want another Indian Hill book. So, uh, but and I might be the only person who likes this character from uh, Zombie Fallout. But if you know, you could somehow work Mister No into Indian Hill 
somehow because I I despise that woman, but I love that she's like Negan for Zombie Fallout, yeah. and she's only in Zombie Fallout. Mm-hmm. So you know, if that could be worked in somehow, you know, that would make it so it, it, just bring it to another level. We find out she's Beth's mother. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. I thought it would have been humorous if Dano was a spoil. <laughs> and ends up in the house with him or the apartment with him on the alien oh. ship she would be a gladiator in the game it's but like, it's a young it's, there's no way it's a young right. Dino, you know Uh-oh. not a spoiled spoil yeah <laughs> she's a spoil not spoiled <laughs> yeah past her prime long past her prime uh yeah i still can't get that image of uh to know in book 16 out of my head <laughs> at all some of you know what i'm talking about some of you don't but most remind of, me uh where the nuclear bomb's going off and she's mad oh that me. one that one yeah no no i don't know <laughs> no no oh. when i had third third <laughs> time through it i just skip it yeah <laughs> 30 Just, second power, 30 second advance, 30 second advance. <laughs> you can't make me. <laughs> no, not at all. I think I actually had blocked that out of my mind until you brought it back up. I forgot. Sorry to bring oh, up like, such wait, a painful memory. <laughs> There's two pe- two kind of people in this world. People who love M- Mr. No and people who lie about loving Mr. No. Because you gotta, I mean, she's just a crazy character that t- adds a twist to it at every turn. I just, mm-hmm. uh, yes. I'm. Mean, she's not my favorite, but she's up there. She's definitely up there in all of, you know, all of it all. So. I think she is a, one of the all time great literary villains. Mm. Yes. So, yes. But that is a story for another time. <laughs> mm. See, if this was a movie, this would have ended right now. And the credits would have rolled. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. not. Yeah. So, uh, so Hannah Bjorn and Summer, thank you guys so much for coming on and, 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 and talking with me about these books. I have no one to talk to about these, which is why I started this podcast. I'm like, I need to share these, share my thoughts in my head about these stories. I need to convey my message about how you can't get from the pike uh, in New York to the Kansas <laughs> Marcus Highway and somebody know what the hell I'm talking about. So, and I'm glad Hannah's from New Hampshire. So she knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, anything else before we go, you guys are, you guys are great. Uh, I really, I really enjoy talking to you and hope that you will come on uh, with me again on another series or, you know, I, Still got openings for future Indian Hill uh, books. I think this was the last one that I had fully booked. There's some space for books three through, is it, there's seven Indian Hills, right? Is it six or seven? I don't know, until the finale. Uh, (laughs) So those are all booked, uh, aren't booked. Those books aren't booked, I should say. (laughs) Say that five times fast. Uh, (laughs) So if you guys want to come back on, we'd love to have you and, and hear your thoughts on that. So. But um, but thank you very much. I really, I really appreciate it. And it was great speaking with you all. Thank you. And thanks for doing this. It's hey, really awesome. No problem. Agreed, so, agreed. Thank you. I'll definitely be back if if you'll have me. Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. If you guys haven't already, please like the Facebook page, the Chronicles of Michael Talbot, the podcast. It's where I add updates uh, about the show. This week's show. Um I mean, if you're watching it now, it's already out. But for you guys, it probably won't be up until late Friday or Saturday. I try to release them every Friday morning, but I just got a crazy week with work and um, some other stuff going on in my personal life. So Mm -hmm. they'll be Friday night. It'll be Friday (laughs) night or Saturday. So, oh, yeah. Last Friday, I was definitely looking at my watch at work like, Jeff, where the hell is this episode? (laughs) What's going on? I know your eyes are all waiting on bated breath and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crucial to your life, but you will be surprised. Like there are some of the shows that the podcasts that I listen to that religiously, I know first thing in the morning when I leave for work, I put the podcast on and I'm like, where the hell is it? My morning is shot. You have (laughs) messed up my routine. If this episode, the new episode or whatever is not out on that. And 
you know, not to say I hope somebody feels that way, but I hope the show will be that popular someday that people are like, where's the new episode? <laughs> you got the jitters and shakes. So that's my little, my little spiel. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you guys all so much. You have been wonderful. Uh, Summer, go enjoy those last few minutes of sunlight while you can. And uh, everybody, you guys have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.